Parent Entrepreneur Power, conversation number 171. Parent Entrepreneur Power. Um, wait, what? (laughs) Power! Power! (laughs) This is the podcast for parents juggling the tough choices required for success in business while putting family first. Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Johnson, and I share the ups and downs and dirty truths of profits and potty training while chatting with successful parent entrepreneurs from all walks of life. Are you powered up? All right, Power Parents, welcome to the conversation. You know who I am, right? Mary Catherine Johnson. And you also know who my guest is today because he has been on this show before. If you go back to episode number 74, so you go parententrepreneursuccess.com forward slash P-E-P. 074. You will hear this gentleman's voice and name and you will get his history and how he became an entrepreneur and what an amazing industry and company he has built. And I really can't wait to chat with him again because a lot has changed since 74. We are actually a hundred episodes later, actually. So we're talking over a year later and I get to welcome back Aaron Walker. He is the founder of View from the Top. Mr. Walker, how you doing? Hey, Mary, I couldn't be more excited than to be your guest today. Thank you for having me back. This is awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Yeah, you were one of my absolute favorite conversations. So I know I'm going to have a blast again. (laughs) Well, thank you. The feeling's mutual. And thank you for having me on parent entrepreneur. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. So let's get this show on the road. You know, we already know your history. We already know about the amazing ride you've had since you were a teenager um, in in the world of, um, oh, oh my goodness. It just went out of my head. The um, pawn. Um, wasn't pawn it? shops. Yeah. Pawn shops. Thank you. 27 years, almost yeah. three decades. Oh yeah. Being in, that was my first business that yes. I retired from when I was 27 and then went back, did it again for 10 years. And then when I was 40, you know, I kind of retired from that, uh, after the accident. Yeah. And so now you're talking view from the top and I, I love that statement. Now, what does, tell me what that means to you. What is, what is a view from the top? All about. Well, people tease me about that all the time. And they say, Big A, why do you call this view from the top? I said, you don't know anybody that wants a view from the bottom, do you? Like, <laughs> we all want a view from the top. And we've just got to decide what that is. That's what people shoot for, right? They want a great life. They want to be very successful. And man, I'm all about being successful. I mean, I've had 12 businesses now. We're on number 13 and 14 right now over the past 38 years. And you're right. My life has been an adventure. I mean, the journey has been phenomenal. My wife, Robin of 37 years has been right by my side through the whole process. She's my biggest advocate. She was there from the very beginning. We got married two weeks out of high school. So she's got to see everything up close and, uh, we've had an absolute amazing journey. We have two beautiful daughters, Brooke and Holly. They both work in the business. Brooke's 34, Holly's 31. And we have the most beautiful five grandchildren that ever graced the planet. (laughs) And I just can't tell you, Mary, how good things have been, but listen, I don't want to make this about me today. I want to make it about your listeners. I want to be able to give you a little bit of context and who I am, but I want to make this interview about how you can have a view from the top. Please, please, because you're right. There is there are very, very few people would uh, settle for or want out of their biggest dream in life is to have a view from the bottom. Um, now, I love, you know, you look at the Grand Canyon and you can look down into it, but to, and a lot of people might want to be down at the bottom of that and looking up, but most of us want to be to the top with the wide open spaces and the beautiful blue skies and appreciating the journey that we had to take step yeah. by step to mm-hmm. get there because it's a tough journey and it's every little step is what gets you there. You don't jump from the bottom of the Grand Canyon to the top, right? So right. tell us, you, you, you're you so sweet in a wanting to deliver that. Um, what does it take? 
Well, here's the thing, Mary, Robin and I learned early on, as I said earlier, we started our first business at 18, sold it to a fortune 500 company at 27. And then we built another business for 10 years and sold it and did really well. And then in 2001, I had that horrific automobile accident where I ran over and killed a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. And my life has taken a radical 180 degree turn from that day. And it's important that your listeners know that. Some have heard my story and others have not. But the pivotal moment was is that I look back and think about my life up until that point, and I had come from nothing, and literally we had nothing. Robin didn't have anything either. And then we were able to retire at a pretty early age. And you say, man, that sounds amazing. And quite honestly, it was amazing for about 18 months. And then what I found out was is you've got to have purpose. You've got to have meaning. You've got to have a reason to get up each and every day playing golf and all that's fun, but you can't do that every day. I mean, you just can't get up every day and have a life of leisure. A lot of your listeners are going, man, I'd like to try that <laughs> just for a little while. You sure, and Aaron? You sure you won't give that to me? You, I would encourage you to try it for a little while, but when the dust settles, right, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when everything settles and you go, man, why am I even here? I look back at my life and I think, you know, my success was good, but nobody cared but my family. And what resonated with me over the next five years after that accident was, is I discovered there was no significance, right? Other person's lives weren't better as a result of having known me. And so my life mission for the past 15 years is, man, earn a lot of money, do well, but don't make money your God. Don't make it your outward focus only. You know, money is a tool. And so use it as a tool to live your life. Don't live to work but work so you can live a very engaging and fulfilling and meaningful life. And the piece that was missing for me was the significance piece. I thought, you know, I've got the ability to choose my own schedule and that's success for me. And I have a little bit of financial freedom that feels pretty good, you know, being able to pay the electric bill. And I started thinking other things that were successful for me though, was like having an engaging family. Man, my family is just everything to me. I love my family. We work together. We see each other. We vacation together. We're at each other's house every day. I mean, I love my family. Those meaningful relationships are really important. And then I wanted to have a clear conscience with all my decisions and taking care of myself and being content without being complacent. And then I thought, well, all those things are good, but they're about me. And what about significance? Like what piece is it that I'm missing? And that's kind of what I want to talk to your audience about today. And some of the best tips that I could possibly ever give you is looking outward and not inward. And I want to explain what that means. When you're significant, it means that you're meeting the needs of other people, not for your benefit, but for their benefit. It's learning to fully engage other people, listen intently, stop waiting your turn to talk. You know, most people are not listening. And the best gift you could ever give somebody is to listen, like lock eyes with them. Mary, you ever been in a restaurant and you're with one of your girlfriends and, and you're talking to her, you're telling her something important. Every time the door opens, she looks or she's looking at all the other tables to mm -hmm. see who's in there. Mm -hmm. Well, see, she's not really engaged. Like you're, you're like trying to get in front of her. Like, listen to me. I'm yes. talking to you. You know, our kids well, do that quite often. Don't they? I know you got to grab their <laughs> face. Look at me, boy. I'm fixing to smack you. But that's what we need to give other people to be significant. We need to help other people when they can't repay us. Right. And you go, uh oh, boy, that stung. Well, here's the mm -hmm. thing. A lot of people will do what I'm talking about when they've got something to gain. But when you look outward and you help people that can't repay you, you've genuinely done something. You've genuinely been significant. A lot of people say, I don't have time, Big A. I'm busy. Well, who's not busy? I mean, yeah. I'm busy. My goodness. Yeah. My calendar is cram packed full, but I live intentionally. Like right. I say, I'm going to do this for this person, or I'm going to schedule time to meet their needs. I'm going to help them. That's the best tip I could give you today is read Adam Grant's book. First of all, Givers and takers. You're one or the other. And I don't mm -hmm. want to be the taker. I want to be the giver. Mm -hmm. I want to be the guy that says, hey, Mary, what can I do to help you? What can I do to increase your business? Who can I introduce you to? How can I leverage my audience for your good? And you're like, man, where did all this come from? And here's what happens. 
the natural reciprocity. You want to help me now at View from the Top. You want to introduce me to your audience. You want to give me endorsements. You want to do that. And all these blessings just come flowing back as a result of me looking outward and giving. I want to be able to provide above and beyond. A lot of people say, I want to do just what I got to do to get my check. Well, you're really messing up bad. Mm -hmm. You want to give more than the minimal requirements. You want to make that customer feel like they're special. They are. They're paying the bills. They're your friends. They're your colleagues. You want to give more than the minimal requirements. You want to prioritize your goals with other people in mind. And I'm telling you, this stuff sounds really foreign to a lot of people that are entrepreneurs. They're thinking, hey, get all you can get. Hold your cards close to your vest. Don't share. When we were in the construction business, other GCs would come in our houses when we do a parade of homes. And we would catch them taking pictures of things mm -hmm. without us seeing it. <laughs> and so I walked up to a guy one day and I said, you like that? He goes, oh, oh yeah, I do. I said, let me tell you where I got it. Let me tell you who installed it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how much it cost. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to make the introduction mm -hmm. to get you one? And he's like, are you wow, kidding me? Dude, what are you saying? <laughs> and I'm saying, listen, it's the best tool you've got. Have an abundance mindset, not a mindset of, you know, scarcity. Mm -hmm. And so when you do this, it's a mindset shift. You want to delay your personal gratification for the greater advancement of other people. Yes. You want to be able to say, I'm going to put off for myself. And then at the end of the day, the mindset that we want to have is we want to have the foresight to invest long term in other people that could potentially impact generations to come. And when you have that mindset, Mary, things happen. It's magical. It, it absolutely is, Aaron. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I'll, I'll probably, I'm going to step right in here and, and jump into the heads of some of the people that are probably listening and say to you, I hear you. I hear those thoughts. You've got some thoughts out there that are going, yeah, but I've been burned before. I go out and I might give something to someone and they take advantage of that. What do I do when someone takes advantage of that kindness? Because some people might. Not sure, everyone. They will. Yeah. No, they will. I'll That's tell you right. right now, they will. That's right. I, I'll tell you a funny story related to this. I was running for a political office. Uh, it's been back in 99, 1999. It was the 10th district council seat in Metro Nashville, Davidson County. And I was out one day campaigning and there's this lady about 40 years old, had a daughter with her about 20. I guess. And she walked out and I said, Hey, my name's Aaron Walker and I'm running for the 10th council district. And I would like to talk to you about my platform. And she goes, are you a Democrat or a Republican? <laughs> and I sit there and I laughed like you did. And I said, well, let me tell you my platform. She goes, no, I want to know, are you a Democrat <laughs> or a Republican? And again, I avoided the question and I was okay. doing it to aggravate her. <laughs> I, said, I, I hate to admit that, but I was. And I said, let me just tell you what I stand for. She goes, this is the last time I'm going to ask you, are you a Democrat or a Republican? And I said, ma'am, let me ask you a question. Why does that matter? She goes, because if you're a Democrat, I'd never vote for you in a million years. I had one do me wrong one time and I hate all of them. Oh, and I said, goodness. you know what? I said, I hate women. And she looked at me and she goes, what? <laughs> And I said, I had one do me wrong one time and I hate all of them. <laughs> and her daughter started laughing. Her daughter said, mom, he got you. He got you. She said, okay, go ahead. Tell me what your platform is. <laughs> well, here's the truth of the matter. Y'all listen, serious. All joking aside, people are going to take advantage of your generosity. They are already know it budget for it. No people are going to take advantage of you. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's just the cost of doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. They are going to take, everybody wants to scam. You know, they mm -hmm. want to take, that's okay. Not it's everybody. Like, Obviously you and no, I don't, no, but there no, are saying, people I'm out there that will. The percentage, I was yeah, alluding yeah, yeah. to the percentage of the yeah. people that are going to take advantage of you. There's always yeah. people that's yeah. going to take advantage of you. Just know that's the way it is. But man, the rewards that you get as a result of doing the right thing, don't let that stop you. Just know that it's the cost of doing business. 
Yes. Thank you so much. And Power Parents, the reason I said that is because I know that's where I was. When I came out of corporate America, that's that's the mindset. I was in the staffing industry. And if you give your notice and say you're leaving the job and you give two weeks notice, you don't get two weeks. You go up to your boss and say, I'm giving my two week notice. They walk you over to your desk, watch you empty your desk of all your personal uh, personal stuff and walk you to the door. Yeah. You don't you don't yeah. stay for two weeks. It's done. Once you've you're changed done. your allegiance. You're out. Right. Yeah. So hey, let, me forget, let me tell one more story, the flip side of this, yes. to show you I can kind of prove that mindset wrong Thank if you. I can be allowed a two Thank minute. Thank you. Go. So when I was in the construction business, as I alluded to earlier, we built very, very high end residents and we built small commercial, very, very nice homes, very beautiful homes. And we were one of 10 builders in the community that were the elite builders. I mean, we were one that you would call to have a really, really nice house built. And so instead of competing, we formed an alliance and it was called the Master Custom Builder Council. And and you're going, oh my goodness, are you kidding? What we did was is the 10 competitors in the business world in building houses in Middle Tennessee, we formed an alliance called the Master Custom Builder Council. Every fourth Thursday, we met at one of the local banks in their conference room and we strategized. We pooled resources. We exchanged subcontractors. We had vendors that we shared. We would do parade of homes and we would give the money to charity and we would promote all 10 builders. As a result of doing that, pooling our ideas, sharing documents, sharing resources, those 10 builders, the last year I was in construction, we did $115 million in business the last year. We became friends. We traveled together. We played golf together. When I couldn't get to a job, I would say, hey, you need to call Bob Shaw. He is amazing. They're like, he's your competitor. You know what? He is amazing. And if I wasn't in the construction industry, he would build my personal house. And we developed that kind of rapport with each other. Now, here's what happened. This is amazing, Mary. Here's what happened. All of the vendors wanted to get before us. And they would come the fourth Thursday in every month three at a time, and they would pitch their wares. They would say, we've got drywall, we've got windows, we've got sinks, whatever. And if y'all will collectively buy as a group, we'll discount this by 25%, which Mm -hmm. made us more competitive, Mm -hmm. which gave us more business, which gave us more notoriety. And we sold more houses and we all made more money as a result of it. Well, we did that for years. I mean, years we did that. See, when you band together, You can do so much more than when you do it alone because the enemy to excellence is isolation. If you want to take your life to heights you've never been before, get people around you and share like no one else and the dividends and the rewards and the blessings. I promise you, I've been doing this 38 years. I know what I'm talking about. It comes pouring back to you. And we do this all the time in view from the top. I promote people all the time that don't ask. I promoted Ego is the enemy last week on a Facebook live. And this is a little tip that all of you all could do And in it. All I did was share about the book. I said, this book is amazing. Ryan holiday is the author. And if you want a great book to help get your ego in check, go mm-hmm. get ego is the enemy. Mm-hmm. Well, the next morning I get an email from a guy named Jeff Goins. Jeff is a real noted mm-hmm. author. And he goes, Avery, do you know Ryan holiday? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, hey, I'm going to introduce you to him. He's a friend of mine. See, because I wasn't asking for anything, but I was promoting because I believed in the product. I got an introduction to the author. I could sit here all day and tell you stories like that. When you give and you give and you give, just these opportunities just open up like you can't imagine. And I second that third, fourth, fifth, one hundredth that because it is absolutely true. And it is very uncomfortable at first. Power parents, it is very uncomfortable because we're used to being guarded. We're used to putting up that wall because we're afraid. And fear is going to be the number one killer of your success in so many ways. And once you break through that, you will, you will see abundance and okay. Power parents, you know, you know, my, my new gig that I've been doing for the past couple of months, this whole messenger thing. And that, that I have applied exactly what Aaron's talking about. And I remember success to significance was what you originally talked about in this, when you were on our show. And that 
is that fuels me every single day. So I'm in this course and we're all learning all about this messenger stuff with Mr. Old um, Andrew Warner. And there's about, oh, 25, 30 of us in this course. And I get it. I get this stuff. It just clicks in my head. But some people may not get it. And I jump on Skype with them and walk them through things and help them with things. And not only is that going to come back to me, and I don't say that for pats on my back, people. I say that because it makes me feel so stinking good Mm -hmm. to to talk to someone and help them. If you want to look for a reason, if you want to feel like, oh, that's, that's selfish and all that stuff, it most certainly is because of the feeling you get. When you help someone without expecting anything in return, the feeling is so euphoric that uh, you you cannot it, it cannot help but fuel you to the next thing and the next thing and it will come back. Not only is it a euphoric feeling, but it will come back to you tenfold. Karma is true on both sides, positive and negative. <laughs> it comes back both ways. Mary, there's a couple of practical tips I'd like to offer. And uh, I've shared this with all of our mastermind groups. We have eight mastermind groups. I facilitate seven of them. It's called Iron Sharpens Iron. And I get together with guys every week for an hour, eight different groups. And we talk about these things. I mean, we absolutely are sharing ideas. But one or two things that will help your uh, listeners immensely if they'll do. And this is going to feel really awkward as well because nobody likes to do this. But I want to tell you the conversion rate is insane. <laughs> and here's what it is. So I get an email from Mary and it says, Hey, you know, Aaron, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. And I cut on my video camera and I'll go, Mary, man, this is amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on your show. You're an amazing host. Your audience is insanely grateful and they're honest and they're people of character and your show is so good. You asked so many great questions and I just want you to know, man, what a pleasure it was today for me to be on your show. And I hit save and I attached that to the email and you open it and I'm smiling and I'm laughing and I'm pointing at the camera saying you rock. Well, that's a whole lot different than you reading the email. Hey, Mary, thanks for having me on. Right. Mm -hmm. People love it. They'll watch it over and over <laughs> and over. They do. And it's engaging. And we do the same thing on Facebook birthdays. I have people I get notified every day of the birthdays of people and I'll throw the camera up. I'll do a 10 second. Let's just say it's Tom Schwab. I'll say, Hey, Tom Schwab, happy birthday, man. Hope today is awesome. Hope you enjoy your day. Hope you spend it with your family and friends because you deserve it, man. Way to go. And I'll hit save and I'll post it on his timeline. I did that the other day to a guy. Everybody in here would know who it was. There was 186 happy birthdays. And there was one video. <laughs> Who's do you think he remembered? <laughs> it took me 10 seconds to do that. I answer everything, not a hundred percent, probably 70% with video and you got to get comfortable doing it. You got to spend about a hundred bucks and get a good Bluetooth. You want the sound to sound good. I've got a gimbal. I pay $275 for, I hold my phone in it. There's no vibration. I can walk and talk. I can point it up and down. So you spend two or 300 bucks and you're set up. If you can't do that, just do it without it, but right. it, it just enhances it. It makes it better. But this video, I do the same thing for invitations. If I wanted Mary, you to be on my show, I would send you an invitation through video. Hey, Mary, heard all about your show. It is incredible. Please be a guest on my show. I want to interview you. You would honor me to be on my show. How much different is that with it versus an email? That's right. Yeah, it just goes on and on. Listen, I know you guys, you don't want to do video. It's like, oh, I sound, listen to me. I mean, I'm a Southern bumpkin. <laughs> listen to this Southern draw I've got, but it's who God gave it to me. Okay. Yep, so yep. blame him. So <laughs> just do the same for yourself. Just be comfortable in who you are and use that tactic. And the last thing I'll share one more tip, give endorsements before they ask. I do it all the time. And get on your video and go, hey, and you promote ever who. If it's Ray Edwards, you know, or Jeff Goins with Tribe Riders, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire, Pat Flynn, whoever, get on there and say, hey, man, I believe in these guys. They're amazing. This is how they changed my life. And I just want to tell you, 
I did that recently for somebody and uh, just because I wanted to, because I believe in them. And they sent me a message back and they said, hey, Ren, this is unbelievable. Can I share it with all of my social <laughs> media platform? Uh, let me think about that a minute. Oh, gee, yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, see what I'm saying? So anyway, just a couple of practical tips that you can do. You know what's funny? Only 10% of the people that just heard this will do it. Yeah, yeah definitely. But that's the people that's going to crush it that's and they're right. going to excel and they're going to make a difference in their business. So you gonna, guys yep. go for it. They're going to overcome that fear because there is a fear of getting on camera. But, but just like Aaron said, if you just think about the person you're talking to, imagine their face, you're talking to them. You're not talking to thousands of their followers in social media. You're talking to that one person. That's really what business is about. It's about that one person, not hey, about everybody else. An opportunity more than you fear failure. Yes. If you fear missing an opportunity more than you fear failure. You will go to heights you never even thought was possible. Yeah. So quit being afraid and yes. get out there and go for it. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Now, now let me ask you a question, a technical question about that. There's, there's gotta be some kind of software that attaches that video to the email. What do you use? Do you know? Uh, Google photos, everything I load to Google photos, but you know, honestly, if it's not over about 30 seconds or even up to a minute, you can just attach it. I use Gmail, so I mm -hmm. can just go in and attach it. If it's more than 30 seconds or so, it won't attach just too many, uh, too many megabytes. Right. But if you text it and that's even better, oh yeah. my goodness, I forgot yeah. to say that if you've got their cell number mm -hmm. and you can text it, that's like way better. Yeah. Everybody will open a text. Some yeah. people don't open emails, their assistants get it, but everybody, if you got, we get back from a conference. First thing I do is go in, put on a dress shirt or nice golf shirt. And I'll go out on my patio and I'll take my camera, all the business cards and I'll shoot videos. Hey Mary, it was nice to meet you at social media marketing world. If I can ever do anything for you, here's my email address. Here's my phone number. You just let me know, man, I'll be happy to help you. And I boom, I'm done. I send it on their text message to their cell phone and I go through the cards and it takes me half hour, maybe an hour and I'm done. And people love it. I'm telling you, it'll work. It'll work. Yes. Thank you so much, Aaron. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm holding uh, something that uh, I think you need to talk about because there's a quote in here that I want that you're exactly talking about because these things that you're talking about don't bring you immediate money. Uh, they bring you something else. And here's the quote, the relentless pursuit of more money can lead to the destruction of the most important things in your life. And yeah. that is from the chapter, chapter number four called breaking free. Now yeah. I'm reading from a book, right? <laughs> Some, it's somebody, my book. Somebody's on, book. It, somebody's my book. book. Big A's it book. is, you, it is stop. big A's book. And let me tell you, I've got to stop myself from falling into that accent. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to try and be myself here. <laughs> View I from, don't have an accent. You got an accent. Uh, they do. Go ahead. <laughs> I just can't even, I just can't tell you. My daddy's from Mississippi. So anyway, view from the top, living a life of significance by Aaron Walker, Mr. Big A right here. Tell me about, tell me about that. What's going on with that and what yeah. caused you to write that book? I have a feeling. You know, I didn't even want to write the book, to be honest with you. I was scared to write the book. I had to push through an upper limit challenge because I'm in, a mastermind group, you know, for a couple of decades with Dave Ramsey and Dan Miller and uh, Ken Abraham. Ken's got 115 books in print. I mean, he's written the most <laughs> amazing books on the planet for people. All of you would know who he's written for. And he sits next to me in our mastermind. I said, I'm going to write a book. And I've got all these guys around me that are prolific authors. You know, they, they're writing books that are selling millions of copies. And I was intimidated. And then Ken Davis, he wrote Fully Alive. He told me, he said, Aaron, let me tell you something, buddy. You got to get over that. He said, uh, the book I wrote, 17 people emailed me and said they didn't commit suicide as a result of having read Fully Alive. <laughs> and he said, that made it worth it all the mm -hmm. time, the effort and the energy. And I started thinking about that, Mary. And I said, you know what? If one person's life is better as a result of having read this and their family tree changes, it's worth every second that it took me to write it. And that was the mindset that we've launched the book with. It has been an absolute delight uh, to write the book. There's so many chapters in it that I just totally transparent. I'm very honest. I'm probably more transparent to a fault, you know, 
my wife's like, are you sure you want to put that in the book? <laughs> and I'm like, Robin, I don't want to have the Facebook persona. I don't want to no. be the guy that's done well. Mm -hmm. And we just share all the good stuff because there's valleys. Let me tell you yeah. there with there, where there is no valley, there is no mountaintop. And so there's oftentimes trials you've got to go through. And I've been through them, you know, I mean, going through the accident with the pedestrian and, you know, other things that didn't work out right. I've had bitterness in my life where people did me wrong and I've had to let go of that. And I teach in the book how to let go of some of those things. I teach how to choose wisely. We're very careful about the friends that we surround ourselves with because Jim Rohn said it best. Mm -hmm. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And we have very, very carefully chosen our inner circle. And I want people around my grandkids and my kids that's going to breathe life into them and give them edification and wisdom and experience and knowledge. And I don't want the naysayers. I'm like, what you mean is you can't do it. You better move because mm -hmm. I've got extreme focus. And I teach you in the book how to have that kind of focus and how to have mastermind groups. And here's the other thing. People are always saying, I need more balance in my life. Well, let me just tell you a little tidbit. There's not a such thing. <laughs> There's not a such thing as balance because that means equal on both sides. What we have to do is put the big rocks in first. Mm -hmm. You have to prioritize your priorities. And for me, I've got it very clearly laid out. I know what's important and I'm going to do those things first and everything else I'm going to fill in around it. So you've got to put into action the things that are important to you. Don't let someone else uh, rule your schedule. You be in charge of your schedule. You be in charge of the things that are important. Live your life proactive and not reactive. And then I just simply close the book with you also can have an indescribable view if you will follow these principles of view from the top. It is so clear. It is so crystal clear that if you lead from that core, if you lead your life from that core of giving, you will have such an incredible life and you will have such an incredible view. I, I, have, I am so privileged every single time I get to share this mic with you, Aaron, I just am. And it just, you bring me right back to my core every time. Thank you so much. Um, you know, Hey, I have a gift for your audience. Can I give it? Away? Please, you mind? please, please come on here and talk about giving and not give something away. So well, there you go. You Okay, this is, well, I'll make this real simple. So if you go to viewfromthetop.com forward slash book, there's uh, four things you're going to get. One is you can pre-order my book. It's like $17.95. I wrote another book called The Mastermind Blueprint, which we so were blessed with to get Seth Godin's endorsements right on the front of the book. He said, this wow. is amazing. It teaches you the value of masterminds, how to start your own mastermind step by step. I mean, we lay it all out there and tell you how to start your own mastermind. And then I did five interviews for everyone. And one of them is with John Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, Ray Edwards, Dan Miller, and uh, I'm not going to tell you who the last one is. There's a fifth one. It's a secret. And he runs a $175 billion organization for 10 years. He was the VP of operations. And the nuggets you get from that interview are insane. And I'm going to give all of it to you for people that pre-order the book. $17.95, you can go pre-order the book at viewfromthetop.com forward slash book. And you can get everything I just mentioned. All right, Power Parents, you know what you got to do. Uh, if you're not following Aaron yet, you need to do that. You need to set that as one of, one, one of your priorities and go follow what he's talking about and start changing your mindset. Change that mindset to giving instead of taking and do the videos. I'm going to go do mine here in a couple of minutes. <laughs> and I'm going to add that to my daily routine because it, it, it feels so good. It just feels so good. Aaron, thank you so much again for coming on and sharing such incredible wisdom, sharing the mic with me, and I, I can't wait to see what comes next. Mary, it's been fun. Thank you a lot. Have a great one. We'll see you. To get powered up for your day, just go to parententrepreneurpower.com and listen to any one of the over 100 episodes we've had so far with amazing entrepreneurs just like you. It might just help you feel like a grown-up again.